joining me for the Pilates for Triathletes workout. So this workout is aimed at strengthening the muscles closest to the joint. So to support us when we're doing triathlon, um, so I think there's a lot of focus on the big muscles, you know, the quads, the hamstrings, um, the, the core, the shoulders. We need all of those in triathlon, but what we want to do is strengthen the muscles closest to the joints to support us during those explosive phases um, and also to prevent injury. So Pilates uses a lot of um, strength in length moves. It also uses single limb movement. So it will make you aware of any imbalances you may have, which you could talk to um, with your fellow triathletes or with a coach maybe, um, which may explain maybe a few niggles you have coming off the bike or into the run. So the focus of this work is, workout is mobility, stability and strength. Okay, so we're gonna start by lying on the mat. Okay, so rolling down. Okay, so we're gonna just start with tipping the pelvis towards uh, the rib cage, using the abdominal, so not squeezing your bum as tight as you can, and then pushing it away, just so you become aware of your neutral pelvis and your imprint or your flat back, flatter back position. Okay, and we want to try and work in a neutral pelvis as much as we can, okay, because that is, gives the most support. Okay, so settle somewhere in the middle of your pushing away and tucking under. You should have a small gap between your lower back and the spine uh, and the mat. Okay, so now I want you to put your hands on your rib cage. So breathing is really, really important in Pilates and really important when you're, when you're doing triathlon. We want to get the maximum amount of energy out of those lungs for, throughout the whole of the race. So I want you to inhale through the nose and I want you to feel those hands expanding, but just not just around the front area. I want you to push the air into the outside of the ribs and the back of the ribs. Get as much as you can. And then I want you to exhale through pursed lips as if you're blowing out a candle. And when you can't feel you can exhale anymore, just try contracting the abdominals to squeeze that last bit of air out. Okay, so we're just gonna do three more like that in your own time. So inhale. and exhale. Good. In. And out. And do one more. And out. Good job. So you should have already start your, your abdominals working there. So now hands are going long. We're going to bring the feet quite close in. We're going to go into some hip rolls, which are just so good for our lower back, particularly when you've been hunched over on the bike for a long time or doing a lot of run training. The lower back can get compressed and start moving as one unit instead of five individual vertebrae. So we're going to inhale to repair, exhale, tip the pelvis towards the rib cage, then push through your um, heels, glutes and hamstrings to come up. Okay, so the idea here is not to get as high as you can, it's to get as much movement as you can out of the spine. Okay, so I don't want you to pop your ribs out up here. Ribs are staying down. It's the lower part of the spine we want to move. We're gonna inhale at the top and then exhale lower down from the ribs, keeping that pelvis high as long as you can to get as much movement as you can, and then release at the bottom. So do three more like that, again, in your own time, but do not rush this. Okay, we wanna try and move each of those five lumbar spine vertebrae individually. The spine wasn't made to move as units. It's designed to use as individual vertebrae. And if we can do that, we're gonna prevent injury. Okay, so this exercise is just super important. If you can build it into your training every day, it's really gonna help. Okay, and lower down. And let's do one more. Rolling up. And then rolling down. Good, so now we're gonna bring the right knee to tabletop, the left knee to tabletop. 
Okay, and we're gonna take the thigh away from the hip joint and in. So what we're not doing is just bending at the knee. So tap away and in. So this is gonna start warming up those lower abdominals. So what I don't want it to do is arch the back and you've lost that abdominal control. Okay, we're working these deep core muscles. So if you cannot reach the mat, only go as low as your abs are in control. Good. For four, three, two, one. Okay, so now we're gonna cross legs. So one comes down and when it's halfway, the other one goes down. Good, so it's adding a little bit more strength. In fact, I don't think I can touch the mat now. Keeping my abs in control. So what you don't want to do is your abs kind of pooch forward and then you know you've lost that connection. Shouldn't be hurting your lower back either. For four, three, two, one and then hug your knees in. So I think that's a really intense exercise. It looks like nothing, but it involves such a lot of strength. Okay, if that was pulling on your lower back, I want you to just tip the pelvis into a more flatter back position, then bring your legs up, and then do the exercise in a more flat back. Good, okay, so now we're gonna take those legs back to tabletop. Okay, so make sure tabletop is 90 degrees. If you bring your legs in here, you're squashing your hip flexors. We don't want to do that. We want to engage that core, keep that working. Arms are coming on a low diagonal, palms are facing the ceiling. We're going to let the knees and ankles go over to one side and then use the obliques to bring them back. Other side and back. Again, we're always in control here. We're not collapsing over. Okay, we're you calling on those deepest core muscles to give us the strength to bring the legs back up. Keep breathing. Okay, if you want a little bit more, take the legs over, extend, bring them back and bend. Good. Just one more either side. And last one. Good. Now, your left leg is going long on the mat and your right leg is going to tabletop position. Okay, arms are long. We're going to go into a one leg circle exercise, which is basically moving the head of the femur inside the hip uh, socket. So we want to make sure that all the muscles around that are supporting the femur, which is used all the time, of course, in triathlon. Okay, but so we're gonna keep the pelvis nice and still. So you're drawing down on those abdominals towards the mat, okay, to make sure you are perfectly still when you move the leg. Okay, what this is not is this, because that's not working anywhere. Okay, really feel those abs pulling down, supporting that leg. Let's do three more in this direction. Okay, the foot is in line with the knee, two, one, okay, now reverse it. So take it a down and round and up. Okay, so you're making a perfect circle. Now, when you're doing this, listen out for any pops that you can feel that may uh, indicate an imbalance. I know I have one on my left side because I have a scoliosis. If you do feel that, make the movement smaller. Okay, let's do one more this direction. And then I just want you to hug that knee in, circle the ankle one way and the other. Then foot down and let's change sides. Okay, so take it down and round and up. My pelvis is completely stable. Three, four and five. Okay, now the reverse down, around and up, two. This is one of the very best ab exercises that you can do. Okay, because it's really drawing on that, the deepest muscles within your core, the base for which you want to get all your power in the triathlon. And last one. 
knee in, just to release that hip flexor and then circle the ankle one way and then the other. Okay, so now bringing the legs back to tabletop, hold on behind the thighs and we're coming up into this chest lifted position. So my head is supported in between my shoulders. So I'm not letting it drop back and I'm not squashing it here. I'm just nice and secure. You can go into a flat back position or have a neutral spine depending on your strength. Arms are going long. And we're gonna pump the arms as we inhale two, three, four, five, and exhale two, three, four, five, in and out. If you wish, you can go in and out or hold your legs straight all the time and out, in and out, in, out, four more rounds, in and out, three, two, and one. Okay, hug those knees in, keep lifted. We're gonna take the one leg long, the other knee bent. Now really reach that leg away for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower the head down, quick hug in of the knees. Hold on back behind the thighs, lifting up again. Hands are now going behind the head and we're going to rotate towards that knee with the shoulder and back for 10, nine, eight, seven. Really reach that leg long, six, five. The lower you take it, the more it will test your abs. Okay, so start in a reasonable position and then build the strength. Last one and then lower down and hook from side to side. Okay, and then taking one leg long, the other knee across the body and look in the opposite direction just to release that lower back and the abs. Good, and then switch to the side. Good. Now, staying long on the mat, arms are coming overhead, feet are flexed for roll up. So listen to the breath pattern here. The breath pattern is crucial. So we inhale as you take the arms to the sky and then exhale, peek at your toes and then rolling up, reach beyond the toes, stack to vertical and then tuck that pelvis under as you roll down with control. Good, let's do five like that. Inhale, exhale, up. Oh, reach beyond those toes so you get a nice stretch down the hamstring. Come up to vertical and then tuck the pelvis, getting as much movement as you can out of that spine as you roll down. Okay, if this is too much, you inhale, bend the knees, Exhale up, just hold on behind those thighs as you come up, reach beyond the toes, come up, and then hold on behind the thighs as you roll down. Okay, this is not a competition. I know that's very amusing saying that to triathletes, but you've got to work within your own body. We're building strength here. Okay, you're much better to build the strength and not injure yourself trying to rush to the the, the full version of the exercise straight away. And up, and then we do one more, and we're gonna stay up at the top. Okay, so inhale, exhale. Reach beyond the toes, restack. Okay, and now we're going to stay in that vertical position. Okay, so vertical is this. Okay, so my pelvis, my ribs are on top of my pelvis, my shoulders are on top of my ribs, my head is on top of my shoulders. Okay, it's not this. Okay, so if this is a bit tricky for you, 
bend the knees slightly if you feel you have tight hamstrings or go to sit on a folded towel or a yoga brick. Just something to lift you up a bit to release those hamstrings. Okay, the legs are coming the width of the mat. I'm coming up that angle here. Arms are coming out to the side. We're going to rotate. Then we're going to lean forward, soar off the little toe, restack and come to the center. Other side, rotate, soar lift and center okay so as you rotate make sure you're not grinding down you want to be lifting up extend and untwist good so rotation is super important okay so we want to move that spine in all directions to make sure it's as healthy as it can be and nowhere is becoming stiff Okay, two more either side. And last one. Good, and then just butterfly the legs and round over. Okay, so we're gonna come into a four point kneeling now. Let's hope that machine stops <laughs> okay so we're going to just do a little exercise to show if um, imbalances and just transferring the weight so when we're in four point kneeling the knees are under the hips the wrists are under the shoulders okay and we're pushing through those hands to make sure you're nice and secure on the back and those lat muscles are supporting us so we need to put all your weight in your right hand then the right knee left knee left hand, left knee, right knee, right hand, right knee, left knee, left hand. Okay, now tuck your toes under and I want you to hover the knees about an inch off the mat. We're gonna do the same exercise. Right hand, right knee, left knee, left hand, left knee, right knee, right hand. Good, so you're making like a little U shape, okay? But the shifting the weight. Two more. And last one, make sure those abs are pulling in towards the spine and lower it down. Okay, we're gonna advance that exercise now. So again, pushing through those hands. I want you to come up into a hover plank, go back into a full plank, okay? Pushing through the hands, making sure the abs are pulling towards the spine. Okay, we're gonna take the knee to the elbow and back, other side, back. Again, knee to elbow, back, the other side, back, come in and lower down. Okay, so let's do that again. Lifting up, making sure those abs are being supported holding here keep breathing knee and back one more either side come into the hover down and then i want you to thread one arm through and just lean into that stretch and breathe release those shoulders release the back and then go to the other side. And then we're going to come on to our tummy. Okay, so arms are going into a goalpost position. So they're coming out at 90 degrees from the shoulder and then the elbow, the hands are pointing forward. Okay, our legs are long, hips are pointing, sl uh, turning slightly in just to give you a little bit more room in the pelvis. The glutes and hamstrings are pulling down. Abs are lifted to protect your lower back. My head is nice and in line, just hovering off the mat. We're going to inhale, use those upper back extensors to lift up, and then exhale, lowering back down to the mat. Okay, so inhale. So try not to push through your arms. Okay, try and use those upper back extensors as much as you can. We really need those on the bike. 
if we don't use our upper back gate sensors on the bike, you tend to get numb hands or neck tension or pain in the lower back. But if we can get those back extensors working, we can spread the load. Let's do three more. Three, my neck is in a nice alignment. I'm not looking up as I'm coming up. I'm gazing to the end of the mat. Two. And last one. Lowering down. And now we're gonna take that into the full breaststroke exercise. So I'll just show you once. So we're gonna lift the head and the hands, shoot the arms forward, swim around to the hips, come in and lower down. So we're gonna do five of those. So lift, extend, really swim around, in and down for two. Keep breathing. Three, keep those abs on, glutes pulling down, hamstrings pulling down. Four. And last one. Five. And down. Excellent. Coming on to our side now, we're gonna work the glutes. So the glutes are notoriously lazy. But in triathlon, the glutes are everything. So we need them. In the swim, we need them. On the bike, we certainly need them in that initial push down. And in the run, we need them. Okay, so let's, let's work them. So we're gonna do start with clamshells to work all the muscles in the outside of the hip. So my feet together and my knees are together. My hips are stacked, so I'm not leaning forward or leaning back. It's quite good to hold your hand on that hip bone to just make sure you're not rocking back as you lift the leg. So we're going to open and close. Feet stay together for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now raise the feet, keep, the, keep them together and we open and close. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so keep them lifted. We're going to open the knees. We're going to extend and in for two, three, four, five. So your hips should be feeling nice and warm now. Seven, really extend, eight, nine, ten, and down. Now, lowering the legs straight, but bring them a little bit in front. We're going to push that top hip away to make sure we're not collapsing in the waist. We're going to lift the top leg, the bottom leg to meet it, and then take them both down. So this is bringing in the inner thighs. And we're going to be working our obliques at the same time four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and ten. Good. So coming up now, we're going to go into a either an elbow side plank or a straight arm side plank. I think I'm going to stay on my elbow today. Okay, so we're going to lift up, really push through that top hand, making sure your shoulder is nice and stable. So you either hold here, or if you wish, we're going to rotate under and open out for four, three, keep that top hip high, two, and one. Lowering down now, we're going to go into my favorite stretch, which is the book stretch. Okay, so shins are lining up with the front of the mat, knees are 90 degrees. My head is resting on the mat and my hand is around my ear. We're going to inhale to prepare and then exhale, hips stay facing forward as you just rotate back opening up that chest and breathe and then close it down 
And again, this should feel really good. This to me is the best stretch after I've been on the bike or swimming actually. And there's a, some, anything there, there's a lot of forward flexion. It's just so nice to open that chest down. And down. Excellent, so let's spin round to the side. And work those hips and the glutes in our clamshell exercise. Okay, so let's go straight into it. So we open and close. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, feet up, open and close. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep it open, extend and in. Two, really lengthen. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, legs are now going long and slightly forward. Lift the top leg, the bottom leg to meet, and down. Two, three, four, five. You may find that one side is easier than the other. I certainly do. This is actually my stronger side. Two more. And last one. Good, coming into that side plank. So resting on the elbow, making sure that shoulder is nice and secure. Lift the hips, top arm goes long. Either hold here or let's rotate and extend for two, three, four, and last one, five, down for a book stretch. So lining up those shins, hips are nice and stacked. And we just rotate back and close it down. And down, and last one. Okay, we'll just end with a figure four just to ease off those glutes. Okay, I'm sure this is a stretch that all triathletes do regularly. If you can get it in there every day, that's just gonna be so beneficial, particularly if you're doing a lot of training and also then sitting at a laptop working all day, you know, we need to stretch off those hips and glutes. You need to bring the knee towards you, but push that pelvis away into a more neutral position for a deeper stretch and breathe. Okay, and then just cross the legs from that knee towards you, just to stretch in a slightly different place on the glute. And then let's go to the other side. Obviously hold these stretches as long as you wish till those muscles release. And then cross. Bring it in. And rolling up. And you are done. So we always say this, but I really hope you enjoyed that. And I really hope it helps you. And I really hope you're gonna build this into your triathlon training. I feel it will make a big difference. I know when I started doing Pilates, I noticed a big difference. Just in the, I didn't fatigue as early. Um, I could push from my core and, and it really helped me build, uh, building the strength really helped me in my triathlon. So I hope it works for you. There are loads of workouts on the channel that are going to help triathletes. There is a triathlete, triathletes playlist. Um, we also have specific workouts for cyclists, cyclists, swimmers, runners, 
which are obviously all in the triathletes playlist. If you wish to combine this workout with some standing strength, I've got a 15 minute standing strength and balance workout, which I think would be really good to go with this. Um, so give it a go, leave me a comment, let me know how, what you think. Obviously I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel um, and good luck with your triathlons. Hope this workout helps and take care and I shall see you again very soon. Bye.